do this way I begin this week a series of um, this uh, series on the um, the base the primary underpinnings of emuna uh, of belief now my 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 son the libertarian who's also a heretic or decided he's a heretic had and uh, has downloaded for me and demanded that I listen he downloaded an illegal torrent because he doesn't believe in intellectual property and uh, he uh, and he demanded that I listen to um, The God Delusion by um, Richard Dawkins now Richard Dawkins is a is a it's a fam- famous biologist and uh, the book is very uh, if you like uh, Books on tape, it's very good because it's him and some woman and they play off and they make a dramatic thing out of it. So, so far I've gone through the first three chapters. And uh, the, I, I know what the rest of the book is like, but until now it's pretty stupid. And uh, most of the book is just insulting religion in very mean and nasty ways. There is no, as of yet, there is no alternative to religion which he has presented. Now he says in chapter 4, he's going to describe how evolution deals with all issues, which ex- all the issues of uh, existence. But so far in his hints and allusions to, um, to his uh, approach, so what, he's, what he said is that by, by, by def- it may well be that aliens were, were the ones who created our universe, our solar system, but those aliens have to ev- evolve as well, because there's no other way by which you can get to intelligent life except by evolution, which is absurd. He has no way of knowing that other than his own assertion. And it always begs the question, what set evolution into motion? He says, of course, well, we don't know, but it certainly could not have been a god. So, things like that are infantile, childish, and besides that, he's very, very nasty and very anti-religion in, in, in a clearly chip-on-his-shoulder type of way. And he deals with a lot of the proofs with, for religion, and he dismisses them out of hand. Uh, the, the, the one which we really have, uh, you know, he doesn't, first of all, he doesn't like the God of the Old Testament, Right? says God of Old Testament was a nasty, homophobic, uh, uh, sexist, uh, genocidal, uh, what else does he say, a lot of other adjectives, uh, jealous, kind of, God, kind, of, kind of bully, right? Well, vengeful. vengeful, right? A simple reading does bear that out. No, yeah, uh, but fine. But um, at, he doesn't like the Christian God of love either. So, you know, he, he says... The, 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 the God of the Old Testament is the most unpleasant figure in all of fiction. Wow. But, he doesn't, but he doesn't like the New Testament. So it's interesting, he at once, just let me, let me let's make a couple more points. It's interesting that he says, well, say if we, it was like a throwaway line, if we like, or since the question is where is the morality in the Bible? Do you see the Bible being a moral book? If you take out Leviticus and Deuteronomy, which of course all enlightened modern scholars do, so then you're left with just stories. So, of course, there's no evidence that you take it out. He's just assuming that you're going to accept his word that enlightened modern scholars take uh, Leviticus and Deuteronomy out of the, um, out of the, uh, out of the uh, Pentateuch. At the same time, he makes fun of the death penalty for adultery and for gathering twigs on the Sabbath. So the adult or the adultery is in, in Leviticus. I don't think it's fair to make fun of that if you're not going to conclude that in the Bible. It seems to be con- con- contradictory. Uh, there are numerous other examples of um, his vindictiveness. Anyway, the fir- the, 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 he brings down several proofs of God which were stated by churchmen in the Middle Ages and dismisses them. And some of them sound like hogwash to me as well. The one which is familiar to us to Jews, is the one of St. Thomas Aquinas. Right, Aquinas is, well, not, not the watchmaker, but yeah, two of them actually, sorry. Two, two of Aquinas' proofs. One of Aquinas' proofs is that there, everything has a cause, which caused it, right? And therefore, there must have been a first cause. 
And that first cause is God. Isn't that a Baruch Bakis? That's the Chobos HaVavos also. So why is that Thomas Aquinas? Why isn't... No, no, he knows as being St. Thomas Aquinas. Okay, so the... Uh, so it's the same proof the Chobos HaVavos uses. So of course, he says, No! It wasn't God. It was, evolu- it was ev- evolution. The molecules, you know, they... He doesn't explain how it worked. But he says, Why call God? Here, yeah, chapter 4. Why call God? Maybe it was something else. So again... Okay, quote whatever you want. But what was that entity which was there, which was the first cause? Why, he says, it's easier to postulate a singularity like the Big Bang than a God. But who made the singularity of the Big Bang happen if there was nothing beforehand? So he doesn't address that question. This is after he spends many, many pages explaining what, why science is superior to religion and says that, you know, we know we know much more than the religious people do, but of course this question he sidesteps. The other one is the complexity of creation. So he assures us, he assures us that evolution can create extraordinarily complex systems. And therefore, since that is the case, there is no indication in the complexity of creation that there is an intelligent designer. I have yet to see his chapter in evolution. I think evolution that you can say evolution based on a creator who set a process in motion. But to say evolution independently is an absurdity of the highest order. Maybe in chapter 4 he's going to convince me. I told my son this morning, I better say brachas before I start listening to the book, because after I listen to the book, I might not be saying brachas anymore. But so far, if, you know, this is, if this is all he can come up with, it's just nastiness, nothing substantial. Your son Questions. he likes the book? He likes the book, yes. I thought he was so smart. Yeah, that, I know. I'm, I'm beginning to question his intelligence at this point. <laughs> no, you see, this is the same son who likes House. So, you know, the TV show. The TV show. Like yeah. So House is a nasty, sarcastic a kind of guy, right? It's a horrible show. <laughs> it, it, it inculcates terrible mythos, terrible character traits. House is it's a... a clean show. House. What do you mean clean? So what? So the hero is a dysfunctional... Uh, uh, what's the word? A misanthrope. And, yeah. you know, that you... He's not a good person. Yes. He says he's a role model. Would you say he's a good teenager? <laughs> but <laughs> for my son, he's a role model. <laughs> for a teenager, he's a role model. A so that's... So I think that uh, uh, Dawkins is like an intellectual house. Wait, your son, does he like the film? Yeah, yeah, he does. Oh, okay. He's not... He does, he's not really... Is. What? He thinks he is. Or he thinks he's just going through the motions. Oh... Yeah. What does this? I, what does this yeah, yeah. The, does, does Richard Hawkins explain? Dawkins. Dawkins. Does Richard Hawkins explain in his book in Evolution how it's very impossible for several and different mutations to just come upon? I don't know. I haven't gotten to chapter four yet. Ask me tomorrow night. Because the, the, the majority of mutations that happen are not beneficial at all. And are, of course. Are not beneficial. And in fact, they don't cause a huge major change. I mean, it's, it's very rare to see evolution. Oh, right. Of I suspect that chapter four will be a just, you know, like an, a nasty exposition of why evolution is superior to religion. But I have to listen to chapter four. Is it small? Uh, chapter what? Chapter four small? I'm going to try and make it tomorrow. Yeah. How, much, well, how big is the book? Like, is it, how many chapters? I don't know, because I'm listening to the book on tape. Uh, yeah. Wait. You know, they down, download it illegally. You know, to, what does he say? I would not spend money on this book. What, did he, what does he say um, regarding Islam? Because if he doesn't say anything... No, he doesn't like any religion. But what, what's his opinion on Islam? I'm just curious. Uh, it's no, a, it, it's a stu- it's a, it, monotheism is better than polytheism, but monotheism itself is stupid. Just subtract one more god, and you have no gods, and that's the idea. <laughs> that's what he says. <laughs> These are just a lot of these just took away a bunch of them, but you know. He doesn't like the the, the concept of God of, of even a bunch of gods. He doesn't like anything which is no, beyond no. science. Doing, yes. Oh. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. What what's his He says he can't prove conclusively that there's no God, because you can't prove that something which do, doesn't exist doesn't exist. His, one of his great riots, which my son thought was tremendous, just me, see, was tremendous godless, was tremendously uh, 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 brilliant, is from Bertrand Russell. Bertrand Russell, not Bertrand Russell, H.L. Mencken, same, 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 same idea. So H.L. Mencken said, there is a tiny teapot 
which is going orbiting around the sun, the celestial teapot. You can't see it because it's too tiny to see, but it is there. Prove to me that it's not there. This place we're in so that's I'm just telling you, oh. you, Yossi, you should go speak to Nisano about this. I don't know what you're waiting for. So they, um, so that, so he says the same thing is true about God. So God is like the celestial teapot. He can't prove it's, he doesn't exist, but it's absurd to postulate his existence. That is his it's attitude. It's absurd to postulate his non, that they came out of nothing by chance. Then it's right. So far he has not addressed that question. He says, uh, yes. Uh, okay, so, um, so Dawkins doesn't actually have any philosophical training, does he? So everything he says is basically... He doesn't believe in philosophy. What's his wait, 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 wait. So he, 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 he doesn't, he, he has no philosophical training. I might have a little bit, but it's not the main... But what the, it sounds like, he's just basically arguing that from the perspective of a biologist. Yes. Which is... He is a biologist, isn't he? Yeah, the, that's what he is. The problem with that is that so he's using his authority as a biologist to talk about a philosophical that that's a misplaced burden. Of right, he believes that metaphy- he believes metaphysics and and yeah. theology are bunk. No, no, they don't exist. Ask some wait. You don't know what you're talking it's about. It's his book. <laughs> oh, so there's no back up okay. Yeah. So he his refutation of his argument is that evolution yeah. or the, the Big Bang could have been the first cause. Yes. I think he, if I remember correctly, from my philosophy training, uh, he has a very completely wrong. It's not that there's a, it's not that the first cause is temporally before. It's that there has to be some reason why everything, even simultaneously, is in existence. Um, which it's not really a matter of like, you know, first point in time. It's a matter of why does everything exist, exist now? There's a reason for it shouldn't exist. Mm-hmm. But I could be wrong. With it. What's his- By the way, there's a book. Uh, Called the Dawkins delusion, oh. <laughs> which is a refutation of the God delusion. What? Not you. Not you. No, he's, he's yeah. More yeah. I was, he speaks about he he, he speaks about his uh, I think it was religious about, education. Has anyone ever asked him why he cares to publish this book? Like, or it, was, yes. Was, In the movie Expelled, which I recommend yeah. highly. Yeah. Uh, ex- Expelled, uh, Expelled is a very good movie by uh, ben, ben Stein. Yes. Ben so Stein. he asked him, what does he care, you know, um, what do you care so much? So he says, says, besides the fact you sold a million copies and made lots and lots of money. Right. He says, well, I, you know, nobody has to read my book. I'm not trying to convince anybody, but uh, I wanted to put out uh, my philosophy. Really? Yeah. <laughs> he believes religion is harmful to people. Well, he believes that people, ki- that religion causes, he says, well, he's pretty much right one of his evidence, what? He's right about that. No, absolutely not. One of his pieces of evidence is that one, some mass, some serial killer in, in uh, Great Britain said that Jesus told him to kill. Well, so from, honest, yeah, schizophrenia, schizophrenia. Is yeah, but the point is that people who hear Jesus and therefore believe in, believe in him are, are, are probably need a good psychologist from his perspective. So, I, I, I mean, in the future they're going to hear Darwin and God killed the trees. Anyway, this is this is one of the this is one of the claims of the the anti-religious is that one second one second is that religion has led to far more deaths than atheism. This is not true. The biggest killers in the 20th century were two wonderful atheists. Hit. Mao Who's the third? Mao oh, Mao Zedong. Sorry, I forgot about it. Mao's biggest, right? And sorry, Mao Zedong and uh, Stalin and Hitler. So these guys were none of them were from. Yeah. Um, also, the Nazis were um, also. Um, I mean, the grand they were the grandfathers were Protestant, but they themselves. I said they're not. No, they weren't that from. Yeah, yes. they were not from. And uh, yeah. Hussein also. Was not a religious monk. Well, Saddam Hussein tried, pretended that sometimes he was religious, but he, he wasn't really religious. Yeah, he wasn't the same. He, he was small, like, small league, he minor league. <laughs> um, does does Darwin, does, does Dawkins, does Richard Dawkins understand that it was the um, great, the social uh, evolution, social Darwinism, which is a form of evolution that's, that encouraged Hitler to take away 
the week of the earth and, and also so far not. Actually, no, they follow just say that social Darwinism. No, no, but I mean that's the social Darwinism. It comes from home. Believe that's when the band start. You saw expelled, right? Yeah. That's because that's what it's spelled. Yeah. My question is on uh, that topic. According to me, there's nothing more than one thing. What is it? Where do morals and ethics come from then? According what is what? Morals and ethics. I don't know. There's really no reason to be moral or ethical. I've argued I, I'm, 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 I really am dying to find out where he is going to get morals and ethics and good from. I actually was reading something uh, written by Stephen Mul- uh, Molyneux about this this morning, about where, uh, where from an atheist... They ask a group of atheists, where, um, do ethics matter? Like, how could they matter if you have no specific reason? Because for any individual, it's better for them to be immoral and live in a moral society because then they get the benefits of everyone else being moral, but they also get the be- individual benefits of, of well, their immoral. That's why most of society is immoral. So, so it's be- always best for the individual to be immoral. And I asked, well, what, what keeps you moral? What, why, why do you have any groups? And he said, well, it comes from a universal... Uh, he basically, like, he brings in uh, something similar to the, uh, like, a universal uh, thing that if everything is done, it's a universal fact that it's better. It's not so different than um, Immanuel Kant's uh, theory of... Categorical uh, imperative. The categorical imperative, that's right. Yeah, but that, too, is based on a, a certain spiritual reality. I mean, with a categorical imperative, like, just you, don't could, call you, it could just say, you could just say, uh, yeah. one individual can say, well, I would like to live in a society totally where means. everybody else other than me follows the categorical imperative. Uh, you could always, uh, uh, an individual person, yeah, move right. from the. That's the Kasha. Not... Yeah. I actually remember I saw a documentary about Richard Dawkins. And one of the ways that he goes about to explain ethics, he says that ethics is found in the basics of animals, like uh, wolves and tigers and bears, and it just evolved to human beings. Well, why can't we just kill each other like wolves, tigers, and bears, uh, you know, kill other animals? Well, that's, that's what he says is that uh-huh. the ethics of. The ethics of the jungle. Of the jungle is comes in, comes into play here. Okay, it's a beautiful thing. I think if anybody kills Dawkins, they shouldn't be held responsible because <laughs> it's the law of the jungle. Uh, okay. Well, I, I think for Goyim, it's better that they're a Christian um, that don't believe in anything because at least if they're Christian, they believe in a God. They believe right. in something. But they're still pagans. Now I want to shift gears. I want to shift gears <laughs> and tell you about a. a, a, a um, the, a book which I'm reading, actually, this is the second book in the series, which is very, very exci- interesting and exciting. No, it's all about Nemuna. Okay. Okay. Michael Newton, Destiny of Souls. First book in the series called Journey of Souls. Th- is this the guy with the phone that tells you the future? No. <laughs> this, this guy, he, you know, um, there are psychotherapists who do past life regressions. Past life regressions mean they put you into a hypnotic trance and they have you relive your past life. Uh, well, the reason why they do this is because very often the trauma which you underwent in a past life is subcon- uh, subconsciously affecting you in this life. That's, that's a lot of psychotherapists do that. I mentioned that, I think, uh, in Sheer last week or two, two weeks ago. And that's something which is, well, I, I'm sure, controversial, but is an in- interesting uh, um, interesting uh, excursion into the deeper recesses of the mind and memory. What Michael Newton is, does is slightly different. He takes people into their past lives and then takes them forward into the time between their lives. In other words, the time they are in heaven, so to speak, between the, their lives. And he has done this with many, 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 many people. And he has found, according to these books, a very, very similar experience which souls undergo and a very similar perspective on creation which souls have. In other words, every soul, and this is not, religion does not come into this, at least not yet. He he himself was an atheist when he began this, but now he believes in, in God. Um, but not, uh, you know, he doesn't endorse any specific religion. The, um, what he says is that when a soul passes into the next world, so it uh, goes through a process 
It goes, you know, we know from near-death experiences, it goes through a tunnel, it goes through uh, the, an area of light, it goes, there, there is a process by which it gets reacclimated into the spirit world. And in the spirit world, you have your cluster of spirits, in other words, your group, your, your close group group, which you have your soulmates, who's one of them, and other members of the group who are very closely, uh, close, 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 mem cl closely bonded together and working together. And each, each spirit group has a guide or a teacher. And each teacher has a teacher. And then there are specialized uh, souls who have other responsibilities. And the souls, according to the level of enlightenment, have different colors all the way from white, for the most basic and new souls, to purple, which are the most advanced souls which he has come into contact with. Where now, he, Michael Newton. How did he get it? By hypnosis. They describe it to him. I understand. You go back to the... Per they describe it to him that they saw purple souls in there. Right. Now, why would the spiritual world have colors? Um, why not? Uh, spiritual, I assume they have no What? I think the spiritual would have colors. I, it's, 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 I don't know if the colors are real or, or a way of the, describing for us the, the difference between the souls, but I don't see why not. So let me just, make, let me just up, uh, say a few other things which he says. The truth is that in this, uh, he has in this book an introduction, an introduction, a summary of his uh, previous book. Well, you that the new death experience? No, after death experiences. After? Yes. How does it know? <laughs> you come in late and you want me to tell you? Okay. Is this a book that everyone should get? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yes. Okay. I think I will just read you this. Um, this is the called Destiny of Souls. There's an earlier book called Journey of Souls. Is it important to go to hypnosis? Is it important? No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, why not? Because maybe it's good to like see yourself, like you know. You should be able to see yourself without hypnosis. Oh, in a mirror. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like character. Yeah, the, you should be able to see your character without hypnosis. Um. Okay, no, I'm not gonna read it inside. Uh, so the uh, so and he talks about what happens if a soul messed up. But generally speaking, he says the souls in Shamaim, for want for want of a better term. And I think that's the right term for us. It are in a state in which they have usually no sense of jealousy, no sense of uh, of uh, animosity, and that's because, to a large extent, all those negative traits which we possess have to do with our bodies, and our bodies are what make us jealous and make us uh, uh, have negative emotions in general. And when a person's soul is free of that, then a soul is on a much more well-adjusted and positive level. But souls have to develop. They start out very, very simple, and they develop and achieve higher and higher levels. And the way they achieve higher and higher levels is by coming back in different incarnations. And he says that there was one soul he came who, who, who told him that he had lived 4,000 earth years to, in different incarnations to overcome the negative trait of jealousy. And now he's beginning to work on the trait of integrity. So, so now this is, it happens to be an interesting thing that the Torah, one of the reasons Chazal say the Torah is important for us is because the Torah, actually it's not, it, it's not really Chazal. Rav Dessler speaks about this. The Torah is the shortcut for these things. In other words, if you don't have the Torah, it takes a long, long time. If you do have the Torah, sometimes it takes a long time too. But the, the idea of the Torah is to try and use it to overcome these negative traits. Because the ultimate trait one is trying to accomplish is chesed. Giving. If, if you're only my man being or you believe, you believe that you don't anti-reincarnation attitude. Then one lifetime does it. Are you going to be exempt from all of these? Um, <laughs> no, I don't think so. Positive. But the Rambam himself was probably exempt. So it's the Rambam reciting, because when you reach the highest level, you don't incarnate anymore. 
But they didn't believe in the, the, the plague. They probably didn't believe in it because they themselves could not understand what else was necessary beyond what they had accomplished. Okay. Yes. It's interesting that you say that there are different colors of souls. Listen, I, I'm not so. Let me just. I don't know if this. This is what's fascinating about this. This is the antithesis. So you came in late, Shabby. How am I supposed to deal with you? The, uh, the. No, him. I'm getting annoyed at him. So the. Um, he's been here a long time. We're good friends. I can get annoyed at him. The. Um, the. The antithesis of Dawkins, who we were speaking about in the first part of the uh, the session, the uh, Shear, if we can call it that tonight, the, uh, the, fir- the Dawkins is a person who can see no evidence other than empirical evidence as to the existence of God and the spiritual realm. But Newton is the antithesis of that, and he says that his 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 per- his perspective is that. Hypnosis unlocks memories which are in our unconscious mind. In other words, they're in the neshama, even if they're not in my brain at the moment, or not active in my brain. And those memories, if they are... uh, uh, Many people have them. And they're achieved in a state in which people do not lie. In hypnosis, people do not lie. They sometimes don't say things, but they don't lie. So if that's the case... There is an evidence here, a very strong evidence, that there there is a spiritual realm to which souls go and from which souls come. And the souls work together. And they, they are always trying to grow in their spirituality. Then their spirituality means their transcendent, absolute love and kindness. And this world is a place where your soul comes down to try and work through those issues which are necessary, those lessons which are necessary. So a soul can start, a soul in one world can have, let's say, um, a very uh, a, a aggressive personality. So that soul in, or, uh, in the next world will choose, and he stresses that you get to choose, will choose a very retiring personality. He says people actually who came to him for hypnosis said that they had chosen lives as handicapped people in order to achieve a goal of some sort. Like some woman who in a previous uh, life had been a bloody, a marauding Viking ma- male who <laughs> wanted to came back as a crippled uh, female who then, instead of, uh, who, who spent most of her life be- bedridden, writing in a productive manner. So that would be the balancing out. And from our perspective on earth, since we can't see the broader picture, all these things look like intense injustices, right? It's not, as we say, fair. But what Michael Newton says is that actually the souls, they get to pick their bodies. And they pick their bodies on the basis of their knowledge that this is, a temporary state. From our perspective, when we are bound by time and place, and we are in a state where we have forgotten what it means to be a soul, so then we have this problem. We can't. We see that there's e- wickedness, evil, un- th- un- and things which are not fair, and we can't reconcile it with a just God. But in fact, if you take the, the idea of Gilgulim, actually, of reincarnations, is a very, po- very powerful tool to understand why bad things happen to good people. And actually that the good people choose to have these bad things happen to them. Yeah. Uh, I was, I, there was actually a study done in uh, Israel a few years ago where they took, uh, they could actually measure the number of uh, the electrical charge, that, how it changed from, uh, I think it was red, which was the lowest, and then purple was the highest. So what they did What's they, interesting is that no souls are red. Oh. They go from white to purple, but none of them are red. But anyway, red is the color of the devil. The, the, uh, the study actually showed that the there is no devil. Don't worry about it. Red is a bad color. Halacha is. Halacha says you're not supposed to wear red, so the shamans don't wear red. 
What's sponsoring you? He's trying to make money for you. And how is he? doing a good job. I mean, this okay, is just keep going. Like, yeah. Anyways, what happens is uh, he had like a very neutral color, and uh, it was it was like um, I forgot what the color was, but it was like neutral. They they made him put on tefillin and 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 and, and, and a tallit, and made him say the prayer, and he, his color changed to purple. And they actually did this several times, and they showed that the color changed. And uh, the person, when, when they were doing tefillot, and they had tefillin, and they had tefillin, they were at a higher level than other people. It was a very interesting study. And you, sh- you should look into it. It's, um, mm-hmm. If you look at it on Google, it's The Wonders of the World. Thank so you. Uh, Rob Zemir Khan. Be, I'm, I don't trust him. No? I, I've looked at the he, book. He's horrible. He, he, he has a lot of, and he takes a lot of, could be that the study is true, yeah. but he distorts a lot of things. Okay. No, he's, he's a buck, he's a tremendous talent. Ta- in, in what's it called, they, a lot of scientists, respect him. It could be, but he does distort things. Oh, wait a minute. It's a, it's a first, I, that's the book I borrowed from the yeshiva once, Hamapach. I haven't returned it yet. So, uh, he makes, yeah. describes how modern science is, you know, right. it's very difficult. Some things are... Is that Yeah. Um, is that, I, one person sort of said, skeptically, this is a bunch of nonsense. Uh, I'm, I was in Israel this summer, and I met a Rebbitzin uh, while I, over at the house of the Rabbi for Shabbos. And uh, we saw her talk about uh, past life regresses. And she actually had had an arm condition. And her doctors in Israel told her she'd have to have surgery, and her arm would never fully heal. She'd always have limb mobility. So she went to a rabbi uh, in the old city named uh, Ephim Sversky, who runs a sort of therapy business. Um, and he took her through past life regresses and found that the physical pain in the shoulder, the actual, not just, not just pain, but the physical injury that they were going to do surgery on, was actually uh, rooted in emotional pain from a past life. And by fixing that emotional pain, she healed her arm without ever having medical treatment. Right. There are many stories like that in, uh, in many books. What, what's your problem with all this? You don't like... Let me, let me listen. Let me you want... What? Let me see what's my problem. Right? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just well, I, I, I'm understanding that... Well, that well, so bear in mind that... If you're not careful, we're going to classify you with Dawkins. Go on. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, the first problem with all of this is that we're not born, at least in the way he's speaking here, it says that in, in the Hazal that we're born against our own will. We, we're brought into this world against our own will. Yeah. So, so it sounds like we don't have a choice as to how and what. Doesn't say that. Say, what does it say that? It says that. Right? Not Nolan. Against the will, you were born against the will. Not, not formed. formed. Okay, what is formed? Right? The Neshama. Wait, in it sounds like in this world. It sounds like in that world. But you just brought a story of someone forming themselves. No, I, 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 they're going to be formed I, 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 as a cripple. Yeah. No, no, that's how they're going to be born, not formed. He's saying against your will, yeah. you're separated from Hashem as a soul. Yeah. And then against your the will. Originally, it's here of you as an independent entity. Okay, fine. Next one. <laughs> this is the second one. Nice try. Against your will, you're formed. Yes. yes. And you're Next! Next! Jealousy. Jealous. 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 Oh, actually, there's jealousy in the next world. That's one thing they said. No, wrong. What? We say on Yom Kippur, we're like all oh, my boy when there's no kina and no tacharus, no jealousy and no competition. What? Not jealous. Not jealous. Not jealous. It says embarrassed. Okay. Is that meter inside? His book? Embarrassed? Yes, if souls mess up, they're embarrassed about it. The other souls... It sounds like they're The other souls try and be nice to them yeah, about it. It says, it says, they're nichvem shechaber. It says they're burnt from their friend's reward. That's what it says. It sounds like jealousy, not embarrassment. What do you mean, jealousy? You can't, jealousy means I am upset that he has it. They're not upset that the other guy has it. They're embarrassed that they don't have it. Keep trying, keep trying, go ahead. Yossi, what's your problem? My issue with this, this book is, uh, what's it called again? This one is The Destiny of Souls. So, so uh, that, I mean, would, uh, have other people with the same, um, uh, with, that have uh, learned uh, psychotherapy but haven't had his experience in past life progression, have they come up with similar things? or have they? Not? I don't know. Has there been because research done? So okay, I don't happened, know. Then it seems to me that's just... I like, don't know. I don't know anybody else to try. But it just doesn't seem like... What's bothering you? It, just, it doesn't seem it's like it's something that can be proven. What do you mean proven? How you put, what, what does prove mean? Mm-hmm. Okay, so if, if somebody else without his experiences would have come to the same conclusions, or if there's any way to... What do you mean his experiences? Leading people over to the answers of the color scheme and everything like that. Yeah. Right, and so other people can try this. You know, you see, go learn hypnosis. 
and put put me into a state of hypnosis and see what we get. By the way, hypnosis doesn't work on everybody. We learned in psychology that it only works on people who like. You don't think that these past experiences these and therefore what? I I I just don't I don't see, I these don't, subjects who went and were people who wanted to be hypnotized. Obviously, they were inclined for it to work. Okay, so. Can you bring a hypnotist to class? <laughs> I don't know. Class. Uh, what's his name? Alex is. I'll volunteer. Alex is a hypnotist. Alex. Alex Zanotrevsky. Yeah, so we'll bring him to class. Yes. Try it like that. Bring him to class. That would be awesome. Uh, yeah, he's not going to put you into a trance. I don't think he puts you into a trance. We'll try it. Yeah, ask him. So why do we claim the... Why do we claim the... So, what's that? You know, he, you want to ask a question for a long time. I'm... I'm yeah, you mentioned that um, you can be from one life to another life. You can go from being a male to female or the other way around. Is that Queen, I assume. Well, no. He says m most most uh, souls pick a primary gender, but th they can accept that they will usually do a few lives as the other gender. Can you go? Where did you? By the way, what happens is your soul, your the per people in your chabura, right in your soul cluster, so they will come down very often with you as. Either your your spouse or your parents or your children or your uh, close friends, right? So there, oh, there'll be that because you're working together. So it makes sense you work together on Earth as well, although it's not always the case. So your soulmate might be your wife in one one cycle, and might be your child in another cycle, and your parents in another cycle. So you might not be able to marry your soulmate. Right? What? People not being able to in, in whatever, and yeah, but it's one incarnation, so what difference does it make? In the long run, it doesn't make that much of a difference. What's Obama's Obama's Kabur? I don't know. If I knew, uh, you switch from I guess that's what I said. What? I don't know. That is, doesn't, he, he very, so far, he's very assiduously avoided the issue of religion. Yeah. Right. You, don't, you don't think he's trying to make money? Yeah. He's, he's making these things up. He's writing in the book. <laughs> if he wanted to make money, he should write. He only sold uh, two hundred thousand copies. Dawkins sold so much more than that. You write a book about. You want to make money? Write a book about atheism. There is already, there is already this is a bummer. This kind of a book. It means that there's yeah. You have response for actions. <laughs> I'll tell you what. That, that's why Dawkins already has. It's already a field that's very intense. Very yes, put into that field. Yes, we're pretty good now. This is writing things out of air. I'm also writing like that. I'm sure it'll come out. What? Past life regression. There are many books about. There are many books. Many hypnotists and many therapists have done it. So we have to compare each book. They are very similar. Okay, everybody sees a white light. What? What is? What is your problem exactly? Why are you resistant to this? What are you resisting it's here? Nonsense. What do you mean, Saudi? What do you think it's nonsense? Why? Well, because I think I have intuition to nonsense when I hear it. So. Why? Why? I don't know. I just do, Rabbi. I have a good sense about this. Like, what do you mean? What's the practical upshot of it? It is true. Yeah. What do you mean, what's the practical upshot what of it? What am I supposed to Now I heard this year. What am I supposed to do? I go back to and do what? You're supposed to look at things in this world as tra tra You're supposed to confirm our Jewish perspective of the transience of this world. How it is very, very unimportant, and yeah, we, we already know. Yeah, but exactly. the, we we, it, we know it. There's a difference between knowing something and knowing something. That's why the word for knowledge in Hebrew is leda, which is the same word for intimate relations, because people can know something as axiomatic intellectually, but you have to reinforce it emotionally. Otherwise, it doesn't really sink in. There are a couple of other things. Yeah. How many times can a soul be reincarnated? Uh, 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 this, now, yeah. Where do you live over 57, 70 years? Yeah, ago? sure, of course. What? Yeah. Well, what, did they, what did they do? Yeah. Just yeah. contradict that. Yeah. Right. What? And the yeah. Rampala. What do you mean? The reason why? They said that you can only be reincarnated three times. Um, maybe that's only by Jews. Okay. What did they do after? Jews? Really? What? Really, they're wrong. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe, so yes. you, you said, <laughs> I don't have a problem saying that they're wrong. Uh, it's not a problem saying that they're, you know, they're very holy. They, if they didn't get exactly right, it doesn't detract from their holiness. Because if we got pretty close, they didn't have hypnosis. Okay, I didn't know that's good. Hypnosis, I guess that's... Yes. Well, well, what do they do after they finish all the cycles? Oh, so, they, so it's interesting the way he says, look, there, there's some more very wild things in here which are hard for me to reconcile. Uh, oh, really? to accept? You just tried to rip through them and tell us a party glass. You just gave us the tame ones. I'm going to get about to give you an example, oh. okay? <laughs> there was one, there was one soul, one soul, one soul who said, who, or one guy who in this world is only comfortable in temperatures of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. 
And it's so in this in his regret in his under hypnosis, he came out that in one of his between incarnation periods, he had he took a detour and incarnated on a different world, in which in which the the there are sentient life forms who are make up the molecules of fire. That makes sense. So he was in that fire world, and therefore the he he was what? Is it the sun or? No, I guess it was we're very close to the sun or something like that. Not necessarily our solar system. Oh. The the uh, and uh, so you know, like if, you know, just as as an aside, it what? Hell? No, not hell. So if you were a chassid and you were trying to develop more his livus, more fervor and flame, so then you would want to go to the flame world. Now, the main reason why I like this is because it confirms the Beckhoffer. A pro, the Beckhoffer theory of existence. The Beckhoffer theory of existence, those of you who knew that's me, but the Beckhoffer theory of existence is the, um, is the to take the last Mishnah in Shas literally. Many of you have heard that from me, which says that at, in the world, to, in eventual future, each Sadiq will get 310 worlds. And that's exactly what seems to be the case. What people, what you're supposed to eventually accomplish is to become a creator yourself. You're not going to be the ultimate creator, but to become a creator yourself. And actually, it says that some souls go between cycles to practice creating. Now, it's very difficult to create. They, they're working on atoms and molecules, right? To bring that up to levels of actual living creatures, that's something which none of his uh, subjects were able to do, it seems. But he... Obviously, the higher level souls who are capable of certain things are not coming to him. Do you have any Jewish people that heal breast and Jewish souls? So, yeah, he had what, what, Jewish in this world? No, Jewish people. Yeah, he had, he had Jews. They, what was their experience like? It doesn't, same it doesn't thing, thing, same thing. Yeah. Uh, would even, Did anybody regress into a wall or into uh, an animal? It's not, I, I haven't finished the book yet. Animal souls I are later in the book. the book. According to the first book, Animal souls are not are are they have a fragment of spiritual energy, which we also say they have a, a nefesh, right? But they're not uh, they don't have the full structure of a soul. Well, according to him, also a fascinating thing: a soul because a soul, and we've said this many times in the course of the years in the shir, since a soul can be divided, the shama can be divided, chopped up, you know, spread apart. So therefore, it's possible for a the neshama part of it remains in shamaim. And part of it is down here. And that's why every night when you go to sleep, we say, your neshama goes up. Why? Because the neshama's connection with the body is not, doesn't have to be as intense, since the body is working autonomously at that point. So the neshama can go up to shamayim and be more in connection with the higher realms. The also, that you, it's possible for a person, a neshama, to divide itself into two people simultaneously. And uh, to be, become two people. It seems to be impossible. Why? Because you have. Um, um, how, could you think of yourself like uh, being um, a little bit? But I'm not my. Yeah, I'm not myself. According to this, I'm part of a greater self. This is a very mystical concept which Jews subscribe to as well. You know that, right? Each one of us is part of the greater Klai Yisrael, yeah, and we're know. unified in as one great neshama. Yeah, but here. One second. Have... Also, the Mekubalim say every Gilgul of a person comes back with Chiyas Yes. For the resurrection. So if every incarnation comes back, that means clearly the soul can remain divided in a certain way which allows for multiple, multiple personalities. And that's, he says it's, it's a very difficult thing to do. Only advanced souls can be two places, two, two divided in two. But there is such a thing. What? Five stars. Five stars. Yeah, they're level four, level five actually. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. So, uh, is this something that we can? Are no, we? Can we is, is, is this even, I mean, are you, are you saying that this is a actual um, something we can rely on, or is it something that maybe? He, I don't know if you can rely, but it's so close. It's so close to what our our, our sources tell us. It's so close that it really affirms our beliefs. These are things which we believe, right? right? 
It's a, again, there, there is no hell. The, the soul torments itself. That's here. Souls which mess up torment themselves. They go into solitude, they become ghosts, they don't want to go back up to heaven right away. There's, there's some, I don't know, but is it just one in a million chance he got lucky, or do you think it's actual something? No, but find? he hypnotized many, many, many people. I know he did. Yeah. But, uh, there's also a, a million other authors out there who write about the same kind of stuff, and a lot of them. There are? Wrong. Can you find them for me? I've seen a hundred thousand books on the shelves that talk. hundred thousand books? Yeah. Name three. I, I've seen, walked through borders, and I've seen books on the shelves that profess to talk about the afterlife. Okay, so how do they get the, how do they get their data? I've read the book. Did you open the book no, to see? No, I haven't looked at them. So what? You can't ask a question based on a hypothetical. Wait, yes. I've, I've seen a documentary where the guy died for nine hours. That's what he claimed at least, and he said Jesus, and, and then Jesus talked to him and told him that he should become again, he should become a new again Christian and live his life peacefully. So it's not a contradiction. Like, he, he he It's not. It's not a contradiction. But Newton. Jesus. Newton. This fellow has never. No. None of his subjects have ever seen under hypnosis any great religious figure come to greet them. But that there is a base in Shamala. The base in Shamala. Yeah, yeah. In other words, it's not. It's not. An, it, they, they try and do it in a positive way to encourage you. You know. So, but the so basic Shemal sees you when you come up, and then you have an exit interview when you go back down again. No, no contradiction. But you believe that Jesus was a nice guy, right? Yeah, no. It, uh, and you can, if the soul is righteous, you can show a soul when it first comes up to heaven things that it believed in, even no, if. Can't be in Shemal. What? Jesus can't be in Shemal. I thought he said that he got. That he, that was some time of the Talmud. Who says it's still true now today? Do you have to assume that just because of the time that Gemara he was burning, he's still burning? I thought people had no, no, you're always thinking ahead no. of him for a certain amount of time. Yeah. Well, no. Time. The um, I, I also this <laughs> is a fascinating one in here. One of the weirder ones. Uh, I, I'd say you know I have sympathy with your position. Okay, but but one of the weirder ones is that one. <laughs> one preacher, one preach, one guy was a preacher who preached the fire and brimstone pre uh, uh, speeches about the devil and hell. And when he get, came up to heaven after he died, the first entity to greet him was the devil. And uh, after he was really frightened, and as after after a few moments, the devil removed its mask and was actually his guiding his his gu his spirit guide was trying to teach him a lesson about you shouldn't have focused so much on the devil. So, take it for, take it for what, uh, what it's worth, which I know yeah, if it's anything. Five years from now, he comes, back, he's come, comes out with a new book, his, his, his new religion. You just, would you just subscribe to it, probably? I don't know. Let's figure it out then. Would you buy his book? I ordered all his books. Okay, this one, this one I took out of the library. I, I ordered all those books. Church, right? He's over 80, he's 80 years old. He's not going to start his own church. He's, he's retired already. Oh, no, was that what? Korean guy who has his own millions of people that follow him. Yeah. This guy didn't spend time in jail. <laughs> he's a PhD. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rabbi, I've actually heard um, once, um, I was studying in Yeshiva in Avatura, um, I was told that many tzaddikim who don't accomplish their mission come back as mentally retarded. And that the mentally retarded are your Siddiqui reincarnated so that whenever you see someone who is mentally deficient, you have to rise, even the great rabbis rush them. I'm like, I, I don't know where the source comes from, but I, don't know. I think the Khaznish is the one to have said that. Yeah, well, it, it, it could be. Uh, could be. On the other hand, a few years ago, it's largely discredited now, but there was this study in which they claimed that uh, autistic children special. could communicate. What, what's it called? It's special communication, I forget again. Um, what? No, like guided writing. It was a special, like they would, the, the, their caretakers claimed that the autistic children would guide them to write certain things. I forget the exact term for it. So anyway, so there was a whole big thing because like autistic children said through this guided writing that uh, they were Rishoyim in previous cycles. And that's why they came back autistic in this cycle. But it turned out that this was um, a hoax. Not a hoax, but the people who were being guided, ostensibly being guided, were really writing what they wanted to write. So they, subconsciously. They 
Maybe they consciously. Maybe they really see what they're seeing. How do you know that? Maybe. Maybe it's really the, the question is why you would see something, why many people would see something which is not part of our human experience in this world. Such as? All this stuff! All this is part of the human experience. It is? Bright lights? New York City! <laughs> what alien abduction is all the same? What? Alien abductions. Alien abductions, yes, okay. That's because you saw them on television, all these things. So everybody had the same idea of alien abductions. Did they ever see dinosaurs? What? Did they see dinosaurs? I don't know. It's not, it's, uh, I, haven't got, I haven't finished the book yet. By tomorrow night, I'll know more. Well, please read Dawkins more, more than Dawkins <laughs> makes more sense than this. No, Dawkins makes more sense than this? No. <laughs> <laughs> What? Are you planning on going OTD anytime soon? No. no. Okay. What did you say? I'll stay for a book and buy talking to the book. Wait, wait, wait. What's that? Off the derrick. Alright. There was a very nice criticism of Dawkins. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, Dawkins book of whatever, forgot his book. Yeah. The God Delusion. I'm listening to it now. God Delusion. Alright, so there's a nice criticism by one of the prominent American philosophers, Elvin Plattinger. It's on the web. Well, I haven't finished the book yet. So far, it's stupid. The God Illusion? Yeah. Right. So far, it's pretty stupid. Um, okay, any more questions for tonight? Yeah. These books like uh, The God Illusion and, and like Christopher Hitchens. Um, yeah, yeah the because of the web. Like, there's there's the I've actually, actually read the book. actually debate both of them. And they never really get into like, you know, three million Jews at Sinai, unless I haven't seen it. And I wonder why they never talk about that, because that seems like a pretty good proof. I don't know. I mean, I would also say that the, the revelation, I, Dawkins does not deal with the concept of revelation at all. But yes, none of them do. Yeah. I, mean, I, I find that interesting. Um, I, I think they're just, they they're probably want to give a, I don't know why they don't, I don't know why Shmuley Boltech does, but yeah. yeah. He has a, a son in MT, he's a very nice boy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, how is this not considered a bit of Torah? What, what, you <laughs> what do you How do you define bit of Torah? This. Something that is not based on Hazal. I'm sorry. I understand. Is there no. You're not. You, how can you say this? Don't we believe in Torah Derek Eretz? Yeah, we do. Yeah. The Gra said. You remember the Gra? No. Oh, you don't remember the Gra? The music one? What, what yeah, the music one. one. Yeah. What, what did the Gra say? I'm not sure. Yeah, let, I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> the Gra once uh, was uh, was uh, made made a seum or some sort of uh, simcha, and uh, the reason why he told his Talmud was because he had finished studying all aspects of of knowledge and wisdom. The Gra. The Gra. And he didn't study philosophy. No, he did. Wait, what? He studied philosophy as well. He dismissed it. He studied. He dismissed it. But he didn't really write anything about it. How? How did? I mean. What? Why should he write about it? He, he read it. He didn't have to write about it. If you want to dismiss philosophy, such a broad knowledge that everybody would respect, if you at least write something. Like he wasn't interested in dealing with that. Uh, you have to, he's mechayev to write about philosophy? Anyway, be that as it may. The, listen, so the Gra said he learns all aspects of human knowledge except medicine, because his father told him not to learn medicine. Because if you learn, be obligated to be a doctor. Or right. If he learns medicine, he's he's obligated to go heal anybody who's sick in Vilna, and he wouldn't have time to learn. But he said that uh, he said that at, to the extent that I, I think this is the more or less the exact quote, but I might be off by a little bit. To the extent that a person is lacking it's an aspect of secular knowledge. He will lack tenfold in understanding of Torah. I didn't hear this. Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, right. so how is psychological knowledge, by the way? That is something you need to know. What do you mean? Psychological knowledge means arithmetics, maybe psychology, maybe. Why is this not psychology? psychology? This is a guy making stuff up, you know, to make money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, I, hey, look, if that you believe that, then you're right. It's a bit of Torah, but I don't believe that. I also disagree to the distinction between secular knowledge and uh, whatever is true about the world is. is I think it was right by secular means. Yes, it's not, there's a bit of Torah is only if you're not doing something which is constructive. This is constructive. Yes. Wouldn't that mean that like every single chasm of the next generation should be like Bachiva? Or in general. I every single what? Every single chasm should be a Bachiva, shouldn't I? Because they, most Bachivas have spent time studying the secular studies. And if those secular studies increase your. Well, make it, make it. Yeah, but you have to have the right orientation. 
You have to have the orientation that this is going, you know, that I'm learning this not just as a body of knowledge, but rather as something which is meaningful in my, meaningful to me in my service of God. Most people don't study that way. Most people study to get a good grade. Okay, I have one student, MTA, very bright kid, who last year was studying history day and night, day and night, uh, and he was studying, of course, during Shear as well for the AP exam, right? He got a five on his AP exam in, in European history. And the day, then he said to me, he said, oh, now I don't have to know any history for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> See, that is the way most kids today learn things. So, that's so really it's an understatement, yes. Question, um, is of topic, why is the ocean, why is the issue with ocean so much, it costs so much? Because the has have a lot of expenses. Is there, is there a way? What? It's not that bad. It's snowing. It's over ten percent of our operating expenses. It's snowing near a college. A college says no. No. Private colleges? Why are you charge like forty thousand dollars a year? All private colleges charge forty dollars a year. Public colleges are much cheaper. Because the know. taxpayers well, pay for public colleges. Yeah. So, yeah. All good. They're still not much cheaper. Like, like, even the still with the taxes. They're like still not much cheaper. Still education. No. Yeah. Okay, but it's like. Tomorrow night, I will let you know what I read, some, what, what I uh, what I find out. Some new topic. New topic. I want to hear what else he said. No.